Hey there, it's Shadow Penguin, back again with another Skyrim build. This week I bring you the Vigilance of Stendar. The Vigilance of Stendar was born in the Imperial City 35 years before the events of Skyrim took place. His parents were of the merchant class, drapers, and he had, to all intents and purposes, a perfect childhood. He never had to worry about financial insecurity, and he was an intelligent child able to grasp the particulars of almost all the subjects and disciplines he was taught. Perhaps it was this sense of all-encompassing security that caused his interest to be piqued when two enigmatic figures walked into his parents' shop. Although their task was mundane, their appearance was quite the contrary. They wore robes which I build associated more closely with mages, though not those of the guild, and much of their countenances were cast in shadow owing to their hoods. No, what gave them away was the weapons at their hips and the eye of a practiced warrior. Every so often their eyes would dart to and fro about the room, looking for trouble despite the mundane setting. Far too shy to approach the pair himself, he waited till they left before asking his mother who they were. She explained that they were vigilants, sworn to protect the innocence of Tamriel from the predations of Daedra and the undead in the name of Stendar. From that moment onwards, it was the boy's dream to join their ranks. However, unlike most childish fantasy occupations, our build did not let this desire be overtaken by the call for a more simple life like most people. He was intelligent enough to realise that it would not come to fruition without work. Lots of it. Every day, from the ages of 10 to 17, he trained with wooden weapons and a post in the courtyard behind his parents' shop slowly building his upper body strength with each passing month of training. He also discovered he had a proficiency in magic. Not an instinctive talent like those children brought up to join the Mages Guild, but his determination and patience was such that he could master the basics of the alteration and conjuration schools. Eventually, he felt he was ready. Hearing that the most work to be done was in Skyrim, he bade his parents goodbye and set off. Leaving Cyrodiil was a huge change for him, but he felt it was a step he had to take. Upon reaching Skyrim, he joined the Vigilance and passed through basic training very quickly, and was soon sent on missions to deal with the threats posed to Skyrim's inhabitants by Daedra, Necromancers and occasionally Vampires. However, all this was about to be turned upside down in a single cataclysmic night. The first warning anyone in the Hall of the Vigilance received was the musical reverberation of a bowstring and the shattering of glass as an arrow sped from out of the gloom, taking a Vigilant in the forehead. Then the doors burst inwards and through the shower of splintered wood stepped vampires, the like of which our build had never seen. Usually vampires were recluses, strong with the element of surprise but nowhere near as imposing as an experienced warrior. These, though, wore tight-fitting armour and carried weapons they knew how to use. They were something different entirely. They were of the Volkahar. Without preamble, they charged into the Vigilance. Some of our build's comrades did not even have time to retrieve their weapons before they were cut down. Our build drew his mace and charged forward into the fray. The vampire who confronted him deflected his first swing with a nonchalant twist of her blade and leapt forward to impale him. However, her foot caught on the body of a fallen vampire, and her sword missed him by a whisker. She paid for this mistake dearly, her onslaught finally ending with the downwards arc of our build's mace. The rest of the battle fared badly for the Vigilance. The Vigilance were dedicated fighters, but yet were still unused to enemies of such strength, and lacked the specialist training and equipment of the Dawnguard. Our build saw Carset fall under the crimson tendrils of five separate draining spells, for he too was struck down, sustaining a sword injury to the shoulder. Fortunately, he had the presence of mind to pull the body of a vampire over his, so he would remain unnoticed, and after the tensest hour of his life, he left the ruins of the hall under the cover of darkness. From there, your story begins. The stat spread for this build is 30% magicka, 40% health, and 30% stamina, with your main skills being one-handed, block, archery 
and alteration. The equipment you'll be using is the Lunar Steel Mace and the Steel Shield for close quarters combat, and the Enhanced Dwarven Crossbow, as soon as you can, if you wish to keep enemies at a distance. The gear you'll need is the Adept Robes and Hood, along with the standard pair of boots or fur lined boots. The playstyle for this build is to begin any conflict by using Ebony Flesh or a similar spell to boost your health. This is particularly effective since you won't be wearing any armour. So with the Mage Armour perk and Ebony Flesh, you will be able to attain an armour class of 300, rendering you very resistant to physical damage indeed. Primarily use your mace and shield against enemies such as bandits, unless they are at longer range, or are too numerous to face in hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Always use your crossbow for vampires to reduce the risk of contracting Sanguinaria Vampiris using the explosive firebolts where possible, as fire is very effective against vampires. Your standing stone will be the Lord Stone, and your only imperative quest is the Dawn Guard, obviously on the side of the Dawn Guard, but you may find other faction quests like the College of Winterhold useful, as well as the main quest. Before the end of the video, I would like to thank Shadow Lord Zero of the Master Quest Gaming YouTube channel for making this thumbnail much better than I could have done myself. He's one of the best Skyrim builders in the business, and I'll link his channel in the description box below. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and see you next time with another video.